Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader here. Welcome to this recording. I'm going to be covering uh, quite a number of ideas and strategies and some uh, answering some questions that I've received from students over the last week or so. I thought I'll wrap it all up in one video. It's certainly a lot <laughs> quicker than uh, typing, that's for sure. We're also going to be looking at using support and resistance for exits and targets. And I really like using support and resistance for exits and targets particularly when you trend trading now for my students most of our trend trades are the t1 setup the t2 the t20 the t25 the 34 89 and the 200 using support and resistance for your targets with these as we're about to discover works really well particularly on a risk reward ratio when you look at the 89b and the 200b for those watching this video for the first time we have 12 to 14 different setups or strategies that we trade and that I teach traders you only need to learn one or two of these to have a fantastic lifestyle as a day trader so please don't feel overwhelmed as I talk about some of these because what happens is you have what I call aha experiences aha that's what it means and where we've got a coded t1 t2 well what we've done is we, we code each setup it just makes it a lot easier for training etc now if you haven't already done so please go to full screen bottom right hand corner here uh, just make it a little easier when we go to the charts and look at some setups on the charts under standing the risk uh, I'm required by a CFTC to put this up if you haven't read one of my risk disclaimers please do if uh, or perhaps you should read it anyway even if you have read it uh, many times so I love this statement by the late great Jim Ron don't get frustrated get fascinated traders if you approach trading with an open-minded that is you've heard me probably say many times the sign of an intelligent person is how open they are to new ideas that is after 20 odd years of trading I still learn something new every day and I love it so I don't get frustrated and what I'm saying to the newer traders is don't get frustrated as I cover a lot of information just replay it and within 30 days you have all these massive what I call aha moments aha that's what that means uh, now that makes sense I understand so they really approach it from that point of view so first thing I want to start with is a number of questions I receive from students and the general public uh, about the types of charts that I trade now if we look at the core um, charts that most traders trade that is we've got the minute bars uh, which is based on time you've got your one minute your three minute your five ten fifteen one hour four hourly etc it goes on so it's all based on time then you have the volume bars now on TradeStation for TradeStation you uses of course that comes up as a share bar so a volume bar the candle or the bar is formed based upon the number of contracts traded then we go to tick bars which is very different to volume it works on the number of trades not volume that is there could be maybe three trades executed but 200 contracts traded so however it only be based upon three ticks high so it works on on the number of trades not volume let me get that right then we've got range so range is based upon the size of a bar is based upon price now for an example of one range on an ES is um, um, one full point which is four ticks 0.25 is um, a quarter of a point so range works on uh, price now sorry I've got phones going off here <laughs> then you've got your exotics which is your Renko your point and figure uh, that should be a capital there uh, uh, your three line breaks or your line breaks etc so I use volume or I really like volume tick and range for me personally I like range on Forex I like a 5 7 8 13 range on the different Forex markets I like tick and volume bars also uh, on I prefer those I should say on futures now one of the questions from one of my students is that he notices that I'll trade volume on the ES but ticks 
on the NQ well it's just a personal preference and as you as I'm about to show you some in a moment we'll look at the charts there's not a big difference quite frankly so it comes down to what you start using now I'm working with a team of prop traders professional traders and they use volume and uh, particularly on the ES so I've really got used to using the volume because of the training sessions that I'm doing with them where I used to trade on the ES particularly during the New York hours I trade the 550 tick however now because they've trade the 1000 volume I'm now trading it because I'm using it regularly and one thing you don't want to do you don't want to be chopping and changing and moving around because what trading is really about traders is pattern recognition really that's what our job is is visually patterns repeat day in day out and that's what we're looking for we're looking for patterns so you want to have your charts fairly consistent so uh, very shortly we'll go and have a look at uh, some different charts and we'll have a look at the difference between uh, tick and volume actually let's do it now <laughs> just why I think why not do it now as I always say traders my videos are raw real and direct and unedited so, <laughs> so I'm uh, giving you this as we as we go along so on the left hand side um, we've got the NQ 133 share bar or volume and on the right hand side I've got the 133 tick candles now when I put my icon this so that candle there and this candle here this is a little smaller than this one but if you look at the patterns if you're looking at the right and left you will see that there's very little difference in the candle types themselves if you look at them and you may prefer to use bars I love candles so there's not a great deal of difference in these now I did a video last week just upon uh, the speed of a market of course we've seen um, with the slowdown in the uh, global markets we've seen some massive volume and I think oh, on Friday we had over 3 million ES contracts straight hand uh, trade hands over rough uh, 500,000 NQ contracts so we've seen some massive volume and volatility right now what that means is where you see I've got here a standard 133 that may be untradeable for most traders that is it's moving that quickly that you just can't get in and execute your trades or the markets run away so what you do you increase your time frames when it comes to that now let's just have a look while we're on this chart and let me see if I can pull up a range so what we're looking at here traders is a range chart on the uh, euro dollar this is a five range so what this means is that every candle is exactly the same size and it's based upon what a five range basically means this is five pips so each one of these candles here is five pips in height and it makes the chart really smooth now once again though in certain markets these form that quickly and you may have to go to a tire to a higher time frame if it's moving too fast for you just something for you to think about so back to the original question is there any particular reason why on some I'll use tick others I'll use share others I'll use um, or volume or range it comes down to personal preferences and that's where your homework comes into a trade is now uh, I still trade the 133 tick on the NQ I just really like that it works except in fast-moving markets where you may have to double the time frame so just play around with that and hopefully that helps so the next thing I wanted to discuss with you all was support and resistance now I've been a scalper for many years now which means as a scalper I'm in and out and rarely would I target or, or trail my stops or go for a higher profit target however a lot of the time I leave a lot of profit on the table I'm a very very good scalper I've got better than 85 percent win loss ratio at a one-to-one -one or better risk reward so it's very profitable for me however getting back there are certain trade setups where if you were to target support or resistance for your targets 
I would do a lot better and you would do a lot better as well so we're going to have a look at that in a moment and some of this and I want to speak directly to my students on this one comes down to what I was talking to you about last week in a couple of videos I did on the 89 and 200 B it's working a real treat targeting the closest swing high or swing low that is the closest previous swing high or low we'll look at in a moment so you want to buy it support and of course we sell it resistance so some of the areas where we will get support and resistance are your daily highs and daily lows on your charts uh, you've got um, previous swing highs and swing lows which we'll look at when you draw in trend lines quite often they act as support or resistance and especially when you start drawing in channels now remembering and when we build in moving averages come down to this and floor pivots and also these retracements all of these in many ways are a self-fulfilling prophecy that is with tens of thousands of traders around the world trading trend lines as an example and trading or drawing their trend lines off pivot lows and uh, and pivot highs etc becomes self-fulfilling because they're probably putting their stops one or two ticks one or two ticks under those support areas and so so many others do the same thing so it's self-fulfilling so um, uh, as we're about to have a look at and the best thing for is, is for me to really show you here but the main thing I want to focus on in this video is targeting your profits and this really gets back to um, stops and risk reward now what we're looking at here traders is the 1000 share bar or volume bar I should say actually on this one on the ES so this is a 1000 uh, volume now 99% of the time now with a 1000 I can get in with a maximum stop of six ticks so in other words if a trade goes against me uh, I'm down $75 plus $4 odd in brokerage so I'm down a little less than $80 per contract so we've almost got an 89 bounce here as you can see we're in between the 34 and I've got a number of entry signals here but if we take the straight paint bar here your entries here you've got a stop there one two three four five six if you went two ticks above you'd actually have a stop loss of eight ticks that is if you got on the close of that candle and very very quickly without going in and we're calculating it correctly it's either a seven or eight tick stop now remembering at the moment uh, and particularly on Friday the markets were absolutely crazy and they ran very very quickly now if I've got an eight tick stop I will set I've got to have a minimum target of eight ticks as well a one to one so another question I have is if I need an eight tick am I better off going for say just sticking with the uh, six tick and still targeting six six where well, you can still do that as well because these trades well this trade here um, uh, was a t25 which is a momentum trade it was a t1 um, and actually right on there once you close below the eight you also had a t2 so you've really got a lot of momentum so you can minimize and keep your stops fairly tight but where that can hurt you is like over here so if the markets ran away from you and you need to have a larger than six tick stop uh, you can see here this actually ticked up one tick above this little swing high over here that's one tick above there and you'll see this happen all the time on the ES and that is why I like to have my stop loss two ticks above the closest swing high but if my stop loss is bigger uh, I'll then have or set a higher profit target most of the time now when you've also got these strong downtrends uh, you can take a high risk that is as far as then maybe um, uh, keeping a stop at six ticks but that would have cost you there okay it's it's uh, so uh, it saved you on this one by having your stop two ticks above your swing high as you can see now let's talk about support resistance as well here we can see here this is basically an 89b we've got an 89b it's actually a double top so where is our target normally I would be targeting on the ES 
uh, six ticks which is $75 four of those a day and you're well over $200 per contract and most of you see I do that in 15 20 minutes within an hour at least worst case so it's very very quick particularly on these lower time frames but this is where I want you to start to think about this and it's rather logical when we analyze it we can see up here we've got a nice 34 B and a T1 when you're pulling back to the 34 you've got a narrow or a smaller retracement this is a deeper retracement because you're pulling back further likewise here you're pulling back further but what we do know of course in trading that time after time we'll go and test a low or a high so where is our closest low so we entered on this particular trade here and our closest low was here so this is a logical let's pull that down actually I can't right now because I've why well, I've got this set up but that should be down a little further so there is a logical low now that's a good 10 ticks I think within that range there so therefore on your pullbacks particularly with your 89s in your 200 strongly consider targeting your closest swing lows or swing highs with the exception of once you have three or four or to be very cautious after you've had a number of these because remember the trend is your your friend until it ends so we've had a great downtrend but then of course it changes trend and we go to the long side okay oh, well actually we went up and we had a 200 now here is a case we've gone up we've had a 200 B our closest swing lows were down here okay and you can see here we didn't come down that far there but we had another 200 B in other words for uh, traders that aren't students of ours we've actually got a trade there and there it is there okay so I should actually have a line going across there what does this mean if you if you target with your 89 B's and your 200 B's your swing lows and swing highs I think you're going to find you're going to have some um, uh, greater profit opportunities uh, some much greater opportunities and I'd still recommend though the first few in a trend okay um, if we look at one here we've got um, uh, there's one there now here is a failed trade uh, unless you, you got out for a quick scalp of four or five ticks you've got an 89 B and a 200 B it went up it failed we come up here is another example traders if you had have re-entered on this candle or even got in here technically you shouldn't have actually shorted the market there and students know why but anyway if you had have shorted your stop loss would be two ticks above there it went against you one tick remember I mentioned on the ES and NQ I like to be at least two ticks above there okay and once again that saved you but then I've either got a little swing low here a swing low here and look at that for a profitable trade and if we just look at this as another example here you've got a, um, a t1 and a 34b there if you take that swing low see how that's it's a small uh, just a small profit target and the reason being it's a narrower or a smaller retracement here you've got a 34b and just as a reminder for those of you that don't have the white paint bar coded as I do on TradeStation there's a white you can see all these white paint bars all you've got to do is wait for your close below your blue line there okay uh, of a trigger line eight so we got to do is wait for close under there so there's your entry there's your entry there's your entry okay um, uh, where's another one there's your entry you close just on or under the blue line and in you go so let's have a look at a very quick look at a couple of other markets so we've jumped back to the FX market here we've nearly got an 89 B here come back and there's our high we got within well there it was right within a uh, within a pip there so you can see here you've got a, a deeper pullback here we've got a pullback right back to the 200 and there is our closest swing high to the left there's our target up here you've got a pullback to your 89 here and there's a target now what I'm doing traders is, is telling you really as a minimum target I'm not saying don't keep going um, but as a minimum target they become very very attractive let's um, have a look at just want to give you an example particularly well if you've got one here that actually failed an 89 but 
that was still very very profitable there as your 89b here you've got a very clear 25 a t25 okay you can see here you've got um, your t1 there's your target there and let me just show you here oops sorry about that traders let's just quickly go back to here all right here is an example we've got a, a deep pullback you've got your 89b you've gone up bounce and then you've got an 89b again so look at that high which is way up there now these are the trades that that really are absolute pearlers these are the ones that make you super wealthy all right and there's a nice t25 there's another t25 you got your t20 there so fantastic trading opportunity duties opportunities sorry traders let me get this out right I'm trying to rush this um, and let's just have a look here at the tick so what we're looking at here is uh, is a 133 NQ we can see we've got an 89 B here's our target now it certainly beats scalping for 14 ticks don't you agree so once again here you'd have a stop there of uh, what have we got here um, now we've got big candles here so right up here this uh, would be your stop would have to be two ticks above there above your little swing high here okay so just quickly I just want to get this as a low 32.75 high 30 right okay so what we've got here is some big price movements traders big movements okay so there you got 20 ticks now where you've got that you still got to make sure your stop is above there except this is a momentum now just one other thing I want to say about um, uh, big stops now where we're seeing um, uh, so much volume and I explained this in a video last week when you're trading a higher time frame if you say go from a, a 133 to say a uh, just say a 300 tick your candles are going to be a lot bigger so therefore your stops or your entry signals means that your stops are going to be much bigger it's very very important that you still stay within the 2% rule on your risk which means if you're trading four contracts you may only be able to trade two contracts just remember that okay here we've got now virtually another 89b here is your target right up there on your swing high okay you've got one there so traders um, particularly my students what I'd really recommend here and you've got one here look at these this is where the 89 B's particularly are working really well for targeting your previous swing highs and swing lows providing you haven't had too many in a trend because remember after a period of time what's going to happen you're going to get a pullback here you've got one here okay that's only this closest so you'd be going right over here but this one here you've got an 89 B look what happened Just come down right down to your support resistance so traders hopefully um, uh, there's been some ideas here for you uh, if you're not sure please feel free to uh, drop me an email if you haven't already subscribed to my channel please do uh, please go to my website if you don't have my free ebook if you'd like or if you'd like to find out more about my day trading program but particularly for my students any questions after this uh, please drop me an email and once again these strategies work on stocks futures forex EFTs all markets all time frames Thank you, traders.